this is the hardest shiny only hardcore nuzlocke ever and i'm gonna try and beat it it's the hardest because we are playing blaze black 2 redux a hack that makes the game about 10 times harder and every single trainer is handcrafted to stop me patience is key and it's something i don't have a lot of since this is no regular pokemon game six to eight shinies won't be enough although i'm playing on the normal difficulty i'll need every possible encounter the rules are in the description but for short if a pokemon faints it can't be used anymore i can only catch the first shiny per area no over leveling the next gym leader's highest level pokemon no items in battle i have to play on set mode before we start our challenge this game was made by dreyano and apex cube their info is down below after a couple of hours i can finally start to run tepic will be our starter pretty decent nature and ability i chose him because its evolutions get the ground typing in this game and will hopefully carry me up until elisa after beating bozo because he actually doesn't even try i make my way to route 19 after some luck from jirachi we find a shiny patch Rat, whom I name Rato. Minus speed nature plus analytic is actually a fine combo. The next encounter we get is an elemental monkey in Flossacy. After some time, we get the shiny Pansage. I later name him Monko. I do some trainer battles and then I find the shiny Suwaddle. Another grass type isn't really ideal. Before we go and face Charon, we get one last encounter at the ranch. It's a lily pup. We catch it, beat our rival and go back to our hometown to face the gym. Gym trainer's beaten and ready for Charon. I press the A button in his face to trigger what might be our end. I know from playing this game before that the Mancino wants to boost his special attack. So I lead Buggo and use Struggle Bug. A move that deals damage and lowers his damage potential. Knowing Charon would likely go for a potion and break his echoed voice streak, I kept attacking. Two more hits and the Mancino is gone. His second Pokemon is Pidav. Buggo is definitely dead to any sort of move, so I switch him out. Doggo takes the hit and fires back with a Retaliate. One more and we beat the Pidav. He sends out his own Lillipop and I misplay hard. I have to switch to Pigo. Fortunately, he goes for workup and another one next turn. If he attacks now, it will get scary. We survive on 5 HP and flame charging back to his Pokeball. Here comes a Munchlax holding an Eviolite. I decide to counter his workups with my Tickles, lowering his defense every turn and evening out his attack boosts. When he hits minus 60 defense, I switch to Patrat and end the battle with a low kick. That's badge number one and probably the easiest it's gonna get. Right after, I made my way to Verbank City. We get three encounters here one outside the complex, one inside, and one in the city itself. A gen 1 starter. Since the gym leader carries poison types and I didn't get any good encounters to face her, I have to settle for a Bulbasaur to absorb the toxic spikes. Fortunately, it only took two resets. Into the gym we go. Roxy leads her Trubbish, the toxic spike setter. Every Pokemon she has carries Venoshock, a move that doubles the damage if the target is poisoned. That didn't leave me a lot of wiggle room. I had to defeat the Trubbish in exactly two moves, or else it would explode and I'd be behind the whole battle. It goes as planned, but there are still two layers of spikes. She sends out her defensive monster coffee. I send out Ivysaur to absorb the spikes. I hit the sleep powder and set up a leech seed. He wakes up turn one, but I quickly put him back to sleep. Time to switch and start setting up. He wakes up again and I get greedy. After I'm plus three, I can finally kill him, but Pig is low. Fearing to lose my starter to a Krogan with a fighting gem boosted priority vacuum wave, I switch to Ivysaur. I tank the hit and sleep powder the next turn. The Krogan is dry skin, so it's weak to fire. I get Growlithe in, but we take a lot of damage. We almost take him down in one hit. The leech seed I set up does the rest. Finally, her ace, Whirlipeed. Knowing I'd leave any of her moves, I keep attacking. But she poisons me, and I know Doggo 2 won't leave a Venoshock. Ziggo comes in as she heals. We get a crit headbutt and a second one almost ends it. But third time's the charm. Pretty rough battle, but I planned it well beforehand. That's two badges. After some team plasma shenanigans, we arrived at Castilia City. I immediately go to Route 4 to get my encounter. We find an intimidate Scraggy. I catch it and name him Thuggo. After helping Bozo in the sewers, I get three more encounters. A coughing, a drillbar and a mana. All encounters done and I set for the gym. But here's where things start to go wrong. There's a trainer who owns every starter bugs evolved forum and all of them put most of my team into one shot range the last thing i can do is put the beedrill to sleep but it outspeeds crits and takes out the ivysaur our first death and we haven't even made it to the third gym leader yet speaking of berg time to face him after some time planning the only thing i got against the spike and rock setting dwebel is a dribbler with rapid spin he dodges a rock blast one turn wasted we get it next turn but we only hit three times we needed five he sets a layer of spikes 
clean the field with rapid spin and bring him down to potion range with mud shot. I needed that to be able to clear all entry hazards. We go back and forth for some more turns, but I can't get rid of the hazard. I take him out. If I rapid spin, leave any KOs me. I switch to Arcanine and take the leaf blades. One fire move and leave any goes down. The change to water type Masquerade comes out. If you light coughing, it's the bubble beam. After some pain splits, I switch. And an analytic boosted strength kills the bug. Coughing goes back in on the X scissor. Some pain split hex later and the Parasect is down to red health. It puts me to sleep, but since I resist all of his moves, I pray to wake up and finish him off. It doesn't happen and he almost takes me out. Ziggo tanks the attack and wins the one on one. But we have a problem. His last Pokemon is a Scyther, holding a flying gem. He also outspeeds everything on my team except Linoon. If I switch in any of my Pokemon, I lose it without doing any damage. So I had to sack Ziggo. At least he got some damage in. Boosted wing attack plus spikes damage make Piggo almost become a sausage. But we make it out of this one mostly alive. I hate you Berg. Patch 3 and I lost 2 Pokemon so far. All that just to have another boss battle 5 minutes later. We have to face Chorus to progress. But before I get my gen 2 starter gift. The one I hate the most but we need it for Elisa. Time to face edgy scientist bad boy. We have a good team so we should be safe. Fake out plus a brick break from Scrafty are enough to take out the Magnemite. Out comes Rotom Fan and I send out my recently evolved Excadrill. A bit of luck on the Rock Blast and it's down. King, uh... I mean Clink is switched in, but we see Pigo burning him to crisps moments later. And that's why you don't send kids. Thuggo comes back out to handle the Metang. Lastly, the most toxic Pokemon so far, a Porygon 2 with an Eviolite and step try attack. Of course, he gets the burn on my physical attacker. I smart strike him with Drillo, but it does no damage. And of course, he also has recover. This is gonna be painful. After the repeating cycle of smart strikes and recovers, I need to get another Pokemon in. Before the Porygon goes to sleep, guess what? He freezes me. Plus the potion, oh my god. I throw out with Fire Fang and finally get it done with the strength. Chorus, you now we get access to a lot of encounters, which means I wasted a lot of my life just shiny hunting. The pain. We also have to fight Lenora entering Nimbasa, and Ingo and Emmett in a double battle so we can get access to the Gen 3 starter. After like a day of work, these are all the encounters I could get before Elisa. Darumaka in the desert resort, Shingling in the rally castle, Solosis in Route 5, Mudkip in Anvil Town, Odino in Route 16, and Grovile as a grotto encounter in Lost Lorne Forest. Time to face Elisa and her electric types. Her first Pokemon is a flying rat, and we don't like rats around this part of town, so I take it out. Her Zepstrika has a fire move, and it's faster, so I decide to switch. For some reason, it goes for bounce instead. Thinking the documents were wrong, I switch Drillo back in to take the bounce, and then kill it. I get fully paralyzed and can't move. And will you look at that? Indeed, it has a fire move, and almost takes Drillo away from us. That would have changed everything about this run. The striped horse survives a bulldoze, but I won't risk getting fully paralyzed, so I switch. Knowing she would heal, I switch to my life orb sheer four star maniton. After a single dig, we can say bye bye to the zebra. The lantern is next, that's why we got Meganium. Two giga drains and he's back to where he came from. Buzzboy comes out. After finding out a dig would not do it, I have to switch out. And of course, he gets the freeze. I barely survive with Pigo and fire back a bulldoze. That was close. Her last Pokemon is Ampharos. I switch my Musharna in, who eventually thaws out and takes out the sheep, giraffe, dragon thing. That's patch number 4. Look mom, I'm on the big screen. To get access to Driftvale City, we have to do an annoying triple battle. It's a lot of work to plan for those, so I just went ahead and did it. I lost wheezing, but it could have been worse. Time to get some more shinies. I get a Dunsparce on Route 6. Cool shiny, I must say. A pink duck on the drawbridge and a Boldor in Clay Tunnel. Cowboy businessman gym leader dude, here I come. All these battles have to be meticulously planned for, or else I lose the entire attempt. Nido Queen wants to set up a sandstorm. If she does, I have no chance to beat Clay. That's when Darm comes in. One life or boosted Zen Headbutt and we stop the Nido Queen. Buggo deals with Seismitoad 
easily. One leaf blade is enough to put him down, even with a grass resist parry. Knowing the Needle King will most likely use Ice Beam, I get my fire type in once again. Everything goes as planned. Earthquake is up next, so I switch to my flying type. And then to my ground type for the Thunderbolt. Muddle takes the Earthquake and finishes up with an Aqua Tail. His ace comes out next. He sets up since he can't one shot us. But too bad for him, we can do it. The next Pokemon is Crocodile. We get Thuggo in for the Intimidate and then two Drain Punches do the job. Last Pokemon is Claydol, but some Paybacks are enough to get us the 5th Gym Badge. Before we make our way to the next Gym, we have to participate in the Pokemon World Tournament. That's an easy win. Team Plasma is causing some havoc at the docks, but we easily take care of them too. I get a Piplup as my encounter from Driftvale vale City and an Axew from Miss Trouton Cave. Before we can get our Charge Stone Cave encounter, we have to deal with Bozo again. Not too hard of a battle, but that Swellow lead is kinda dangerous for us. Now that he is asleep, I can get Gigalith in to rock slide him. Arcanine deals with the Lilligant and in comes the Electric. Since it can actually deal that much damage to Fracture, it's time to get him set up. It kinda gets close to killing it, but we make it out safe. The hail isn't helping at all. We outspeed and one hit the Flygon, barely surviving to hail damage. Since I won't survive another turn, I switch to Meganium, who is the perfect Samurai counter. You're really a bozo bozo. We get a Sephiro seed in the cave, a cup shoe in route 7 and before the gym we have to face Chorus again. But this time he doesn't really have Pokemon. The game developers actually gave him Pokestar Studios enemies and made them into Pokemon he can use. They have the same stats as mythical Pokemon, but since they are both steel types, Drillo easily takes care of them. On our way back to the gym we go to Celestial Tower to get one of the best Pokemon in this game. Not Mistrevas exactly, but Miss Magius, which it evolves into. After some more extensive planning, I'm ready to hopefully beat Skyla. This is a tough one though. I need to put a choice scarf on Darmanitan for my strategy to work out. We even lucked out and got a crit on our second rock slide. This is why we needed the scarf to outspeed the Archeops. Darm is such a beast. Another game changing encounter we got. Life score is up next. Time to switch. Pharaoh tanks an earthquake but is dead to a crit. I decide to risk it because we don't have many Gliscor counters. I set up an iron defense and a leech seed. If he crit any of these 5 or 6 turns, I probably would have lost more Pokemon than I did. Skyla uses a potion. It gives me time to regain more health. We finally take him out with a bullet seed. She has a Togekiss with amazing coverage. Boldo takes the hurricane and sets up a sandstorm for extra special defense for Pingo. After a yawn and a protect, I get Drillo in to one shot the Togekiss. Since I couldn't take a water move from Swana, I had to switch. I really only have one option here. Since there is only one Mon on my team who won't die to her attack, I get Doggo into battle. We dodge the burn, but another Scald plus life orb damage hand us our fourth death of the run. Now the Swana is in rage for a rock slide, and so is the Drift Blim. Rest in peace, Doggo. We love you. We get patch number 6 as a consolation prize. We fly to the other side of the region to proceed our quest. We get a handful of encounters here. Before we have to face Bozo again. We get a minus attack Trapinch, a plus defense Shuppet, a shell armor Shelder, a pretty bad Jellicent, an Absol with minus attack and an Eevee with the same nature. Time to beat Bozo again. Fight was as easy as always, so I won't bother to show any more battles against this joke of a man. Once the battle is done, we get access to some more encounters. A modest Lunatone, a modest beauty fly, a shell armor shelmet, a hound hour with nothing special about it, a Meryl with huge power and plus attack nature and a Rotom at the mall. After all that hunting and catching, I made my way to the unsafest gym ever. Don't they regulate these kinds of things in Unova? What's up old man, are you ready to take this loss? I send out Thuggo to intimidate his Drudigon. His highest damaging move on Scrafty is superpower. And who is immune to it? Yeah. Miss Magius. So I switch between both of them until the dragon is minus 6 attack. Remember when I told you Miss Magius was overpowered a couple of minutes ago? Yeah, this is why. He's fast, has a lot of special attack, is a fairy type in this game and gets setup moves. Now that I barely received any damage, I set up a couple of nasty plots. And you can see what's coming. Since I outspeed everyone on his team, this becomes a sweep real quick. And yeah, finally the dragon gets the dragon typing. Batch 7 
was a breeze to get. But when we get out of the gym, Team Plasma attacks the city, some grunt and easy mini boss battles after, and we go to the underwater tunnel. It's so amazing, amazing like if you press the subscribe button. I know you're enjoying this video. Soon after, we get to face Marlon, the final gym leader. Aquaman's son in the Pokemon universe was a pain to plan for. Accounting for rain boosted moves, potential burns, I really hated that. But we got pretty lucky. After some sleep turns and setting up stealth rocks to break Caracosta sturdy, we get our ace in to do the replay of the last gym. But this time, we can only get one Astiplot off. Since Politoed was asleep, I took the chance to get a second one off. From there, no one could stop us. One after the other, I drowned his Pokemon in their own tears. Ghost for President 2024. He gets sad and goes for a swim. Probably some weird Aquaman habits. Time for a couple of last encounters. I get an Among Us west from Humilau and a Tynamo in a cave south from the city. We dock the plasma ship. We put Zinzelin in the trash for the millionth time. And then he runs away from a 10 year old again. When we arrive at the giant chasm, we find old Team Plasma and new Team Plasma partaking in a rap battle. After that brief moment of joy, comes a moment of sadness and pain. Back to back to back, annoying boss battles. First up is Zinzolin. You have to stop following me, dude. He has a hail plus blizzard spamming team. It took me like a whole three hours to plan this fight. I went back to the Pokemon World Tournament and taught Wildegard to Swampert. The plan was to sweep with Haxorus after a couple of dragon dances. But stuff never really goes as planned in a Nuzlocke. A rock slide takes out both Vanilux and Cryogonal. But on the next turn, Frostlice dodges it because of Snow Cloak. I hit it next turn, but missed the Mamoswine, who also has the same ability. And there goes one of our best Pokemon. Knowing that they would target Mudo, I switched to Scrafty to take the hit and also intimidate his Pokemon. I should have targeted the Weavile there, but I do it next turn. I switched Thuggo out because he was low, and fortunately, I equipped an air balloon on Empoleon. Azumarill gets the KO, and we move on to the next boss battle. The next boss is Chorus. It's a triple battle. I hate Chorus and I hate triple battles. After changing my team around a bit, I'm ready to face him. These battles get confusing, so I'll make it easy for you to follow. Fake out Metagross, nasty plot. Flare Blitz scales the Magnazone. Turn 2. Switch fire into the Grass Dragon type. Flamethrower Metagross. Dodge Hydro Pump. Turn 3. Switch dog into the middle. Dodge high horsepower. Drain Punch Clink Clank. Turn 4. Risky play, but we dodge once again. Drain Punch KO. Bye bye Doggo 2. Turn 5. Flare Blitz Porygon. Z, take an Hydro Pump with Gecko and Drain Punch the Rotom. Turn 6, win the battle. Next, we have to fight Getsis right after battling Curum. Without a break, there's no way we make it out of this one without some sacrifices. A Rock Wrecker one-shots the Legendary, but Boldo will also be my lead against Getsis, which is less than optimal. I quickly switch him out to go to Pigo. An Earthquake did no damage. Even worse, it sets up a trick room. Tired of it, I use V-Create to send that ghost back to the dead. Expecting an Aqua Tail, I switch to Pharaoh. Iron Barbs plus Rocky Helmet take a third of Electros's health. It coils and I set up rocks and a Leech Seed. When it was plus 3, it was in range to get a KO on Pharaoh with a Drain Punch. So I switch in Miss Magius. An Aqua Tail was the only option here, so back to Pharaoh Thorn we go for some more Iron Barbs and Rocky Helmet damage. It almost goes down with that. Same trick again, but this time we also successfully stalled out the trick room. The High Dragon was actually faster than my Miss Magius, so I had to switch. I put it to sleep and sack Pingo. And now we Moonblast away. A Genesect Iron Head goes into my fire type, and since I have a Scarf, I outspeed and one hit KO. Gyarados comes out, he D dances and becomes faster than Miss Magius. I need to sack another Mon. Boldo gets the privilege, but he dodges the attack. Three deaths in one battle. One Sucker Punch from Pingo and Gyarados goes down. Mach Champ is next. I predict the fighting move and then moonblast him and his owner to the afterlife. Only the walking stick was left. I bulldozed my way through Victory Road and arrived at the Pokemon League. After a day of planning and preparation, I decided to start with Grimsley. His light part U-turns and I get a Quiver Dance off. Flygon is finally a bug type. That Dragon Pulse had to be life or boosted or else it wouldn't kill. And we had a one hit KO Brave Bird coming our way. Crocodile gets bug buzzed. Scrafty can't really kill us, so 
we beat him after a couple of dragon pulses. We eat the overheat from his houndum and even boost our own houndum's fire type moves and win the mirror match. A flare blitz takes out the B-sharp. Swampert proceeds to take care of the lion cat. That's one of five. If anything goes slightly wrong, the whole run is ruined. I can't afford to lose now. Caitlyn is up next. In this fight, she tries to set up a trick room, which is very bad because all of my mons are fast. I taunt the Bahiam first turn and then use foul play. Unfortunately, it holds a focus sash, so it lives. After a full restore, I show it the fastest way back to its planet. Ryu Nicholas is up next. I switch Ghost to win for the focus blast. A shadow ball doesn't kill, but I got a second one coming for it. We have to switch out our fairy because one bullet punch would take it out. And then our flame monkey scraps the metagross. Due to its typing, Flygon now resists water type moves. And when the staff bug buzz, chaos the slow bro. Not even holding a bug resist parry can Gothithel survive a bug buzz, since it's part dark type in this game. Last but not least, the Musharna, which also has a new type, being fairy. Drillo comes in and smart strikes that weird levitating being back to the dream world. Alpha Man Marshall is the next victim. A moon blast is enough to KO throw, but Sog has 30. After the full restore, two more moon blasts are enough to knock it down. Add two more moon blasts to that and two more of his Pokemon go to the Shadow Realm. The Miss Mage's counter is up next. Lucario uses Dark Pulse for some reason and on the next turn a Flare Blitz kills it. The Medicham comes in. Predicting the Psychic move, I switch into my Dark type. And then the Fighting move, I switch to my Ghost type. It crashes doing a high jump kick, breaking his Focus Sash and allowing me to end the battle with a Moon Blast. For the final Elite 4 we have Chantal. This Jellicent was so painful to plan around. I knew from the start my team wouldn't make it out of this battle unharmed. I U-turn and switch between Darmanitan and Flygon to get some chip damage. As soon as I'm in range to knock it out with a Shadow Ball, I switch. Unfortunately, we get burned and that puts a timer on our sweeper. Golar comes in next. We can't defeat it with a single Shadow Ball, so we switch. Swampert into the Earthquake and retaliates with a Waterfall. It barely leaves the attack and finishes off the Golurk next turn. Chandler has Shadow Tag and I can switch out because of it, so we sadly have to let Mado go. That's tough. Excadrill actually outspeeds and one hits with Earthquake. We get a low roll on the save light and it lives on 1 HP. We deserve that Will-O-Wisp miss. She heals but a better roll Earthquake kills. Drifflim is up next. Since Drillo is holding a choice band, I can't really hurt it. I miss click and press EQ again. I'm just taunting, I'm a pro player. I tank the hit with my dark type and then one rock slide leaves her with one last Pokemon. This is gonna be a pain though. After some calculations, there was only one way I could win. I switch to Excadrill. An Earthquake takes about 70% of his HP, but a crit Shadow Ball kills Drillo. One Shadow Ball from our MVP and we get over the hump. Time to face the champion. Her lead is a Dragonite with Multiscale, which a Moonblast doesn't take out because of it. So I lead Darm and U-turn to break the Multiscale. He Dragon Dances, but since he doesn't have a move to kill, he boosts his stats again. Now a Moonblast is enough to take him out. Superior isn't that threatening, so I decide to set up. We take the Leaf Storm and now we are plus two. It's a one hit KO. We barely outspeed the High Dragon, but one Moon Blast is also enough. A Thunderbolt for the bird and a Moon Blast for the Axe Dragon. But it has a Focus Sash. We lose our MVP. Knowing the heal was coming, I use Quiver Dance on Flygon. A Dragon Pulse is a one hit KO after that. The final Pokemon is a Feraligator, but it stands no chance against me. And this is how, after 120 hours of my life, I beat the hardest shiny only Hardcore Nuzlocke ever.